and peace from which from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and have made us kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, said the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. The Lord is talking to John and letting him know, amen, that the grace of God and peace of God is with him. Those who hear this word and keep it, then they will be blessed. He talked about the seven spirits. It represents the manifestations of the Holy Ghost, which are before his throne. And Jesus declares himself here as the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, uh, and the prince of the kings of the earth, who has washed us with his blood. He is a faithful witness. God is letting the church know that what he is about to say, he has a right to say. God lets us know that he is a faithful witness. He will not lie, but he will tell us truth and nothing but the truth. He says that he comes in clouds. Every eye shall see him. Then he declares that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Said the Lord, which is, he has always been God Almighty who created the universe, which was, he was manifested in human flesh. He came down to us and we get to come and he shall return. Not second, third, third, uh, 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 third divisions of a one God, but the one God is, the one God was, and the one God is to come. Yes. No first, second, third person in this. He said, I am Alpha. Not we are Alpha, but I am Alpha and Omega, the first and beginning of the Greek alphabet. I am the beginning and the ending. In our English, he is saying, I am A to Z and everything in between. I'm the beginning and the ending, said the Lord, which is. I've always been in the beginning. God created the heavens and earth, which was. And God was manifested in the flesh, which is to come. And he's soon to return. Who? The Almighty. I, John, notice what he said. He said, I, John, who, who am a man like you, I, John, who is your brother and companion, what, in the midst of trials and tribulation, you, I throw the word to you, you're not going through by yourself. You've got brothers and sisters that are also, amen, going through the fire as well. And they understand what you're going through and, and, and can pray and help you. Amen. And then you can use their lives as an example. If God brought them through, then you know he can bring you through. As a matter of fact, in the book of James, James uh, used Job. He said, consider Job. Look at what Job went through and how he had patience to wait. Look at the things that Job went through. And sometimes when you know some people that have been in Christ that have suffered, that have gone through, amen, you can look at them and see how God has brought them out. John said, I am your brother and companion in tribulation. In the time of my troubles, God, help us. When we're going through, help us. Not to be critical, but help us to be companions with each other. Help us to go through with each other. Yes, Help us to pray with and for each other. Yes. John said, he said, I am your brother and companion, not when time for good, but in tribulation, uh -huh. I'm with you. Yes, That's what the love of Christ is all about. Yes. In tribulation, I'm your companion. Yes. Not having the spirit of a hireling that flees when the trouble comes. When Abner was running from Joab and his brother after the death of their younger brother, Abner was running and Joab and his men were pursuing him. Abner got to a hill at a certain spot and he couldn't run anymore. But all of a sudden, Joab and his men stopped. And when Abner looked around, children of the tribe of Benjamin, they gathered around and they stood with him when they saw Abner running and he was outnumbered. They came and they stood with him. What were they saying? We are your companions in the time of trouble. We will stand with you in the time of trouble. 
God give us a heart to stand with one another in righteousness in the time of trouble and in the patience. Help us to wait together in the kingdom and patience. Listen, brother, my sister, don't give up. I too am waiting patient. I too am praying for patience. I too am seeking God to heal me, to cleanse me, to strengthen me. You ain't going through this by yourself. I too lose sleep at night sometimes, wondering, God, am I ever going to get through this? I too am God waiting for the patience and the coming of the kingdom. My sister, my brother, you're not my enemy. Yes, Lord. I too yes, pray for patience. Yes, I too am fighting trials and tribulations. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He said that he was put reading. I, John, who also am your brother, and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the hour that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Why was he there? For the word of God and for the testimony. Why was he put on the island to die? For the testimony of Jesus Christ. Lord, let me go through for the word of God. Let me stand for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Tradition says they took John and they put him in a pot of boiling hot oil. But it didn't kill him. So the only thing they could think of was let's get rid of the old man. So they put him on this island, this barren island full of wildlife from barbarians on the island of Patmos to die. But it's not over until God says it's over. You may feel as though you're in a situation to die. The devil may feel as though, amen, have, have you feel as though you need to give up. Satan will come and tell you you need to leave. He'll allow a situation to bruise you whereby you quit. Want to quit. But it's in times like this when God can come through and what was meant for your evil, he can turn it around for your good. They put God on the island to die. But in the midst of his death sentence, John said, I wasn't by myself. On the Lord's day. The Spirit of God was with me. And in the midst of all that pain and trial, the Holy Ghost came to me. Holy Ghost, come to me. Holy Ghost, speak to me. The devil's telling me it's no good. It's through. But it ain't over until God says it's over. Holy Ghost, move upon me. I'm in a bad situation. Why don't you give up? I'm looking for the Holy Ghost. I'm looking for the Spirit of God. Because though I may feel this way, I know God promised to never leave nor forsake me. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And they that walk in the Spirit shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, even in the midst of trial. Even in the midst of trials and tribulations, we don't have to give in to the flesh. The Holy Ghost can take us through this. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet sitting on that lonely island, sitting there, not knowing what to do. Verse 11 says, what did the voice say? Say, I am, I Alpha, am Alpha and Omega. And Omega. The first. Not only am I the beginning and the end, but I am the first and the last. And I am the last. And what thou seest. Write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. I'm finna and show you Jesus, something. What you finna show me, God? I'm finna show you a way to out. To and to Thyatira, and to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candles. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirit to see if they be of God. You better turn to see who's talking to you. Yes. Ha! Yes. You better turn to see what's moving on you. And John said, I turned to see. Yes, Lord Jesus. Read. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one 
like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and a girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like a defined brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shined in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Lord, help me to identify the spirits that talk to me. Help me identify the emotions and feelings that I feel. I feel a virtue. I feel a virtue. And he turned to see who, who is this talking to me. It's a good thing that the God we have can talk. Amen. My, I said he can talk. Oh my God, I feel a virtue. I said he can talk. He is alive. My God, he says, talk about it. Let's talk about it. God said, come, let us reason together. Because he can talk. He will answer. And he saw Jesus, a vision of Jesus. His hair wasn't wool, but it was white like wool. White as snow. Eyes a flame of fire. Feet burning like brass. And furnace. his voice, the sound of many waters. In his right hand, seven stars. Out of his mouth was a two-edged sword. His countenance, his face was sounding like the strength of the sun. And, and, and John said, I feel that his feet is dead. He fell to the floor in the presence of God. And he laid his right hand upon me and he said, fear not. You don't have to be afraid. Why, Lord? Because I am the first, everything in between, and the last. I got you. Fear not. Because I am the beginning and I'm at the end, and I got you. Fear not. And he touched him. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Does anybody listen to this? Amen. Let the church say amen if you will. Amen. And then he said, and I have the keys, two keys of hell and of death. And that devil comes to threaten us with hell. He comes to threaten us with death. But I'm here to tell you, you can't threaten me with hell. Satan, you can't threaten me with death. Yes. But why is that? Somebody say, why is that? Why is that? Because I know him who has the keys. Yes. Hallelujah to God. And I know that he's righteous. And he's just. And he knows my heart. And I want to trust in him. Satan had the keys of death and hell. But when Jesus went down and rose again, he snatched that authority from the devil. And live captivity captive. Understand, the God we serve has the keys to death and hell. And we know that he's righteous. Read it. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. The mystery of the vision that you just saw. Now that's a powerful statement. What is he trying to say? What am I trying to say? No excuse for saying I don't understand. Because God will give you the understanding. He'll give you the understanding. The mysteries. He'll give you the understanding. Listen. So he broke it down to him. The seven stars that he held in his right hand representing strength. The angels of the seven churches. The seven candlesticks represented the seven churches which thou saw. The word angel that means messenger. He said, I got a message to give to the people of God. And this is the first message. Read. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus. Unto the, the messenger of the church of Ephesus. Right. These things said he that hold the seven stars in his right hand. Now each time Jesus gave a message to a church, he presented himself in a different way. 
in this particular church, he says, he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. In other words, it is by my power and by my strength you are able to stand. Read. Who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. He says, I'm in the midst of everything, so I'm a true witness. What I'm about to say is true because I'm right in the midst, tabernacle, and I'm looking at you. Read. I know thy works. I know your works. People say, God knows me and he does know you. He does know you. I know your works and thy labor. And I know your labor and thy patience. He says, and some of you got patience. And how thou canst not bear them which are evil. You don't like those that give themselves over to evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles. And those who say they were apostles and preachers, you tried them. And are not. And you found that they were not and has found them liars. And you found them liars. I know your works. I know your labors. I know your patience. So this is a pretty good church. Now you see why he represented himself as he that is holding the ministry in his hand and he that is in the midst of the congregation because this seems to be a pretty good church. Amen. And it's kind of hard to find fault in a congregation like this. But Jesus said, I'm in the midst. And what I'm about to say is 100% true because I'm there. I know you. I know your works. You don't like those that are evil. You labor. You have patience. You cannot bear false doctrine. Those who say they are God, you find them to be liars. Read it. And as born and as patience and for my name's sake have labored. You have been through. And you have held out in patience and for my name's sake. You have labored. And have not fainted. And you have not fainted. Nevertheless, this church would praise God and sing all night as though they were going into glory. But God sees further than us. But nevertheless, I have somewhat against God you. God said, I've got something against you. Because thou has left. Because thou has left. Thy first love. 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 He didn't say you lost it. He said you left it. So now you see, because you go through the motion, or because you even do good, doing some good, come on, it's not good enough. Say it. You got to walk all the way. Yes, you can't say, "Hey, I don't believe in false doctrine." Hey, I got patience. Hey, I got faith. I got this. But sometimes we we are used to doing these things. And those that are truly saved, you're not just going to give over to evil. But you're going to keep God in your heart. But the problem is, work is he in your heart? You thou has left. That means, that word that means you have gotten off course. You have put aside. Anybody hearing me? You have gotten off course. You have put aside not just any love, but protos, your first, the most important love. That which should exceed all other things is no longer first. No, you, you haven't left God, but you're not loving him like you started off loving him. You're not loving him when you were really fervent and on fire for God. You left your first words, your first love. First, of most importance. Now, this was a church that was strong. They were on fire. And to the natural eye, they had it going on. But to God in the midst, he knew they could do more. He knew it. And he knew that they were half-stepping. They lost their first love. Where happened to your love? God is no longer number one in order. He is not the most important thing of your day. There are other things that are more important and more pressing on your spirit than getting right with God. And yet God says he will help us in these things. 
He will help us in our everyday living. He will help us in our working. He will help us in our homes. He will help us in our daily dealing. If we just put him first, he'll make sure that all these things are taking place. He's a fair God, but we have left our first love. And though he offered to help us, if we seek him first, and man, we have pushed him to the side. Every day, we focus on things more than we do God. And man, and in the name of God, we say we do it to give God the glory. But he ain't getting the glory because he's not first. When it comes time to sacrifice, we sacrifice our time with God for other things. I feel a virtue. When something is first in your heart, you can't get your mind off of it. Come on now. Amen. When you're really involved in something, it stays with you day and night. That's right. But what stays with you day and night more than your love for God? You be the judge of it. What's pulling on your heart more than your love for God? You be the judge of it. And if there's anything that bogs your mind, brings you down every day, you carry that weight and you carry that burden. And this is what you're focusing on. And, and in your day, this is what you must do. Before anything else, you got to do this every day. Oh, you might put your little prayer in. And remember, this thing don't get no little thing. It gets all your time. This thing, this person. But you say, where's your first love? Lord, I need my first love. Amen. That was the time and I, I, I put God before everything. I, I need my first love. Come on, man. I said, listen, I don't want to be bothering nobody while I'm trying to pray. What you doing? I'm just talking about my first love. Come on. Not trying to be offensive. Normally you come up to me and I stop what I'm doing. But now I, I'm in revival. I got to go pray. Oh. I deal with you like what? I'm not trying to be offensive. I want that first love. God's going to handle whatever it is. Yes, I need that first love. Oh, yeah, I got to go. I got to go. I ain't going nowhere until I let my first love know that I love him. Yes, you know what I'm saying? I'm not putting a lot of God. God, if you can help me do this, help me do that. God, and I love you. God said, love me if I don't help you do this. Love me if I don't help you do that. Love me because of who I am. You have left your first love. Know that Bible can testify, can discern, because you're still saved. But deep down inside, he ain't first. You didn't lose him. You just left to put him on the side. He's still there, knocking, trying to come in. I feel the virtue. People, the only love that's going to work with God is the first love. He must be number one. Amen. He must be first. And how many churches have left their most important love? Because why? He is no longer the most important thing in your life. How do you know? You tell the tree. What do you concentrate on more in the week? Come on now. Holy Ghost speak. What do you carry with you in your heart more? Holy Ghost speak. And some of your attitudes have taken the place of God's first love. Some of your attitudes have taken the place of God's first love. Because instead of putting Christ first and walking and acting like Christ, you walk and act like yourself. I feel the virtue. Come on. So if I'm offending anybody, I'm not trying to. But when I was a child, I spake as a child. But now that I'm a full grown man, I need to act like. And a lot of saints need to grow up. Grow up. When we should be eating meat, we're drinking milk. Hello, 
up, church. Amen. Now watch this. You think it's good because you appear to have a pretty good life. But Jesus said, even though you got faith, you got patience, you labor, you hate evil, you can prove false prophets, you find them liars, you go through. He said, I still, in doing all of that, I got something against you. You can fool everybody else. He said, but I'm in the midst of the candlesticks. And I see your heart. And you don't love me first. Every opportunity you get, you're trying to do whatever. But you don't do that for me. You don't do that for me. You get burned out doing everything else and then you cut me short. I feel a virtue. Yes. Oh my God. I feel, oh my God. You ask me to come through for you, and when I come through for you, you go the other way. And yet I still bless you. God said, I got that against you. You left your first love. You have left. Your love is not in order. Your priorities are mixed up. How many times do we work overtime? But you don't pray overtime. How many times do we work overtime? But we're watching the clock. So we got to be the work on time. Nothing wrong with that. God said work. But it's the principle of what I'm saying. How many times? Uh, how many times have we, a man, prolonged it, or, 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 or took time out to do things, stay in the middle of the night, TV, video, uh, 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 sitting, whatever it is, and boy, and then we get up and still do the next thing. But church roll on and on and on, and I gotta go. Well, and well, listen. Well, listen, if God can allow you to stay woke to work overtime and do all that other stuff, you don't think he can help you in praising him? Yeah. It's the principle that counts. Yes, I gotta go, you gotta get to heaven too. Yeah. Where is your first love? Yeah. If I love something, son, and I really love it, them, or whatever, I don't mind the sacrifice. Yeah. Right. Time means nothing. You ever been in love and talking and talking and talking? Just goes by because it means nothing. Oh, right. yeah. love yeah. covers a multitude. Amen. Yes. Well, you better go now. You got a long way to go. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I, I can make it. <laughs> but you got to go. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> You're going to barely be making it, but that love has something, something about that love. Uh, Oh, for the virtue. Yeah. It's something about that love yeah. that causes you to go the extra mile. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. But we give that love to everything and everybody else. And when it comes time for the little time we give God, we cut him short. Amen. We want to mix it with stuff. Well, I'm going to praise God while I'm doing this. Well, while you doing that, you wasn't praising God. I'm talking about where is your first love? You can lie all you want to, but to tell a tree by the fruit it bears. God is my first love, is he? Lord help us, right? Lose your phone. Lose your phone. You ain't got no money, but by this time next week, you'll have another one. <laughs> but you didn't have no money. Amen. Because you say what? You got to have it. Mm -hmm. You got to have him. Amen. You got to have him. You're standing so tall, but yet you don't realize you have fallen. Mm -hmm. You have 
gotten off course. It's like you've been driving, right, son? Uh -huh. And you know that the, the time you've been driving, you should have gotten there. And then you look at the direction, you make one wrong turn. You're falling. You've gotten off course. A lot of y'all been driving a long time. You say, Lord, what come I ain't got there yet? Because you're not falling. You're on the wrong road and you don't know it. I feel the virtue. You're going about it the wrong way. Why that? Because God is not first. And if you're not following him, then what are you following? Read verse 5. I'm about to close here. Read verse 5. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. You see that? You think you're standing, but you have fallen. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. Remember from, and go back to the point where you got off course. Think about it. Think about it. Where did you get off course? I got off course when I got involved with this person. I got off course when I did this. I got off course when I got offended and I went that way. I got off course when I started doing this job. I got off course when? I got off course when? When did you fall off course and didn't realize it? And you're wondering now, you're all tired of wondering, man, I should have gotten there by now. God said, you left your first love. I feel a virtue. I feel a strong virtue. Because you know why so many so-called Christians have left their first love. You can lie about it all you want to, but we're seeing the fruit that you eat. Take no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow will take thought for the things of itself. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these things will be added. That's as simple as that. Put God first and he knows everything you need. He'll give it to you. You got to put him first. But as long as you love the Lord or say you serve God and you push him aside, it's going to be a long journey. It's going to be a long journey. You're going to find yourself reaching and reaching, never getting. And the more you reach and reach, the further you get from God. Why? Because he's not your priority. Therefore, then all of a sudden, you stop following his way. Then you get entangled with the cares of this life. Because that's the way they do. They want to reach and make it without Christ. Listen. Because you sing a church song, don't make you sing. Because you're a rapper with a with a top gospel album, don't make you righteous. Because you are a movie star who makes a picture about the Christ, don't mean you saved. Right. Hello. Amen. A lot of people use the Christian concept for motivation because they know that inspiration gives people hope. A lot of people use this gospel and inspiration of speaking and preaching. Even a preacher prays at the inauguration of the president over such an ungodly country. Because they know that people are moved by religion or beliefs or inspiration. So because something has a little bit of Jesus in it, don't mean Jesus is in it. It's just something to draw you. Oh, Jesus is in this! But that's all you hear about Jesus. The rest is this. I feel the virtue. If you love God, then you will walk as he walked. You will put him first. You won't cut him short. He should be your first priority. You have left your most important love. Your priorities are messed up. Now, before it's over with, you can get mad all you want to. 
If I'm telling it straight, I'm telling it straight, straight up, straight down. It hits me and everybody else. But hey, but I want that first love and I want to keep it. Amen. Church, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm not calling you hypocrites. You need to call yourself one, if by chance you are. But this is to purge us. Who do we think we are? We all want God to bless us. We all want God to help us. Church, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And one of the biggest things the devil do is let you come to church and get your feelings hurt. <laughs> and then put it on God. <laughs> Go home, get the hell knocked out of you, but you don't put it on the devil. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't let the devil, don't let the devil use your emotions against you. Yeah. Church, say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. I feel the virtue. Because you're rebuked or corrected, that means God loves you. And if offense does come, there's a way to deal with it. Yes, but don't allow that thing like that to move your flesh yes, and lose your first love. Yes, because when you keep God first, he'll stand with you through it all. You, and he'll speak for you. Yes, Remember from whence thou art fallen and repent. So while you're sitting up thinking about your last lust of fact, when you're thinking about your last of uh, this and that, okay. when you're thinking about your last job opportunity or your last financial blessing or your last this, while you're remembering what so-and-so did to you when, then, that, and this, and that, and the, uh -huh. when you're doing all that, why don't you take time to remember from whence I have fallen? Yes, from God. And go back. Read it, preacher. Let's close it. Remember, therefore, from which thou art fallen, and repent. And? And repent. And? And repent. And? And repent. And, and repent. Turn around! Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have a change of heart and change of mind, because evidently your thought pattern is off. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's what repentance means. Have a change of heart yes, and a change of mind. You're not thinking right. Yes, Lord. You don't want to mess up an opportunity so you hide your real faith in God. You don't show your real love for God. You don't want to offend nobody. You don't want to lose a job. You don't want to this and this and that. Back in the day, some of the sisters used to go for jobs and this and that. And those that were with, at the time we were here, coming, sometimes they would be tempted not to wear them. I said, well, why wouldn't you wear them? Well, we'll get the job first, then we'll do Well, why don't you go with it? Wear it in there. One sister went to the job and said, hey, this is the way I dress. I'm not going to change it. The job changed the dress code. So she can dress holy. And now when the sisters stand up, we have sisters that go to the courtroom. They say, listen, you can't come in like that. They stand on the outside. But they don't change. And then some are accepted like that because they make their stand. You make a stand for God, he'll make a stand for you. But where is your first love? In my younger days, I never forget. I stayed up a whole week. I would fall down on the bed just for a few minutes. I'd go to work, come back for a few minutes, but I never would just what you call go to bed because I felt convicted, son. As a young preacher, I said, "There's no way I'm gonna work more than I praise God." That was just me in my younger days, right? So I said, "I'm gonna stay up all week in the presence of God that He may give me strength." Because I'm going to show God that I love him more than I do my job. And I did it. I went to the army base one time. The brother said they had believing officers. So I took advantage of them. And I went to that army base praising God with the liberty to preach son. And I preached three days and three nights with no sleep. Those commanding officers came. You still here? And I'm saying I thought y'all was Christians. I was on fire. I don't want to lose that. I'm a lot older now, but guess what? I still don't want to work more than I pray. I still don't want to get more involved in this and that more than I love God. And when my body is weary and I'm tired, I still want to get up. If I got a limp, I want to give them cold. Ha! I feel the virtue. Listen, listen. If, if my body is hurting, I'm going to give them praise. 
because I don't want to lose that first love. I remember the zeal. Maybe I can't do it that way, but I can show it in another way. Maybe I don't have a strength to do that, but I can cry loud and stand out. And I can testify about the goodness of God. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. Remember what you have done. Remember from whence thou have fallen. You know what you, you everybody in here knows whatever it is. Maybe some of you have not lost your first love but those that have you know. Repent. You're thinking wrong. Your priorities are messed up. The eagerness and the zeal and the desire of this world have drowned you. Mercy. Yeah, you, you got Jesus with you still, but you're tagging him along instead of following him. Mercy. Mercy. Oh, he does not deserve the way we treat him. And yet, we're faking a lot of us in our hearts. In the name of, it's for you, Jesus. It's for you, Jesus. Said, well, if it's for me, why come I'm always at the end of the list? If it's for me. If it's for me. Where am I in your schedule? What? Lord, I'm doing good at home today. That's good, but you're trying to give this other thing 34 hours. Mm, that's right. 15 hours. Two days. Three days. But I appreciate the hour you give. At least you gave me an hour. But they don't change nothing. If I'm not first, then I'm not at all. He said, you need to turn this thing around. He said, but I'll come and do what? Remove it. I'll remove it. Your candlestick out of this place, except you repent. Except you repent. Have a change of heart and change of mind. I'll mess it all up. I'll remove you because you can't come to me. The Bible says that no man, whoever cannot deny himself, is not worthy to be his disciple. That he's such a fair God. He said, I'll bless you in whatever it is that you're doing. You know the right thing. All he said is, seek the kingdom first. And all of his righteousness. He said, and I'll give this stuff to you. I'll help you get it. Whereby it's safe. Lay that up for yourselves, treasures on earth. Where thieves can break in and steal, and moth and rust can corrupt. For wherever your, what did it say? Your heart is, that where your what? So what would be considered your treasure? The thing you devote yourself to the most. Oh, Jesus is my treasure. I may need to increase it, but that's what I devote myself to the most. And yet, preacher, I am ashamed to say, I can use a little bit of that first love. Yes, sir. But I remember how I used to pray. How I used to fast. How I used to preach. Yeah. But I'm going to get rid of the word used to. Yeah. And I'm going to preach it. Yeah. I'm going to pray it. Yeah. I'm going to live it. Yeah. I'm going to show it. Because yeah. I love him. Yeah. And when I used to keep my mouth shut, I'm going to open it. Yeah. I'm going to say something. Yeah. I'm going to make a stand. I feel the virtue. The Holy Ghost says, you can't fool God. God knows you love him, but you can't fool God. If he ain't first, he's going to put a monkey wrench in your wheel. 
to get your attention. Jonah, go preach to Nineveh. I'm finna go. Jonah, you don't think God see you going the wrong way? You keep on running, bro. Keep on running, girl. You don't think God see you running the wrong way? Oh, you got to the dock. You got your ticket. You got on the boat. They got a room for you down there. Jonah said, now, nah, all right. If only God could see me now. Hey, man. Hey, wake up. What's the problem? There's a storm out there and we can't stop it. We have thrown everything off the boat. The only thing strange on this boat is you. We're going back out. We need your help. He said, don't worry about it. He took a look at that storm. I thought he didn't see me. But you can run from God, as the old school said, but you can't. Jonah said, throw me overboard. What? You better throw me overboard. What? I'm a backslidden saint running from God. You better throw me overboard. I lost my first love. I left my first love. Throw me overboard. I'm God's property and I'm running. And he's coming after me. We're not throwing you overboard. The boat got to sink. Throw me over. We're not throwing you overboard. Throw me over. We're not throwing you overboard. What? Get him out of here. They threw him. And the storm stopped. But God ain't through with you yet. Because the whale got to come. The great fish got to come and swallow you up. He's got to put you in a position whereby you're going to have to cry out from the belly of hell. Save me! Help me! God, I know now that you're the God of all flesh and there's nothing too hard for you. And Jonah said, from the belly of hell, he heard me. And he saved him. But thou hast what thing? But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Now understand this. Don't think you're so saved, all because you look good, you walk right, and almost everything you do is right, but you know in your heart God ain't first. The way of the Nicolaitans was a Christian belief that believed that the flesh didn't matter. Because you were saved, you could do what you want, fornicate, get high, get drunk, because the flesh didn't matter. Mingling the flesh with the church. God said, I hate that. And these people hated it. They didn't let folk come in and live in any kind of way. And yet, they still had to repent. Because they respected the things of God. They had a love for God. But they had fallen off course because they stopped letting him become first. They got to church when they got there. They prayed when they prayed. If something was going on, he got the back burner. Hey, they needed somebody to fill in for the job. They didn't have to do it, but they did it anyway on the church night. I'm going to take that back. You going to take that back? No, sir. No, sir. I ain't going to take it back. Whatever the power is in your hand, put God first. Amen. Put him first. I keep feeling a virtue. I feel a virtue. My God, the Holy Ghost is ministering to somebody. But what good is it if you don't listen? I feel a virtue. I feel a virtue. I don't care if you're angry. Good. Repent. But don't lie on God. He deserves to be loved first. Because after all, it's Him that created us. I feel a virtue. The Holy Ghost has not come to play with us. He doesn't play with us. He's not concerned about our fleshly manifestations. But his concern is that we glorify Jesus Christ. I feel a virtue. I see spirits of stubbornness and anger and 
prostration. Who do you think you are? God give it. I said God give it. Now you better end it right. Blessed be. You don't want to pray with God. I keep feeling the virtue. You don't want to play with God. He has to be first in that love affair. Protos of most important. Of mo I can't do that. Got a great opportunity, but it's going to cause me to transgress my God. But man, you got a great opportunity, but he's my first love. I can't do it. Some opportunities you have to walk away from because it's against the first love of God. Well, why not, preacher? A lot of Christians walk away from the first love of God to get opportunities backwards. But if you realize this world was not your home, it wouldn't be a problem. The way of the Nicolaitans, God hates mingling the world with Christ, thinking you can be saved and do what you want to do when your body and spirit belongs to the Lord. Because you have liberty. I ain't got no conviction. You ain't got to have none. You can kill a man, don't have conviction. Don't make it right. Because the word of God is not based on our convictions. It's based on what's written. Help us to repent, Lord. Help us to remember that first love for which we have fallen. Look deep down in my heart. Please never let me to the part.
I'm gonna stand on your side. I'm gonna stand on your feet. I'm gonna stand on your side. I'm gonna let it be made known.
Something about 